All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's lovely to see you all, as always. And let's begin by going straight into the superpower state. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into the, your superpower state, however you normally do that. Are you using your word or phrase or your anchor? Or by focusing in on everything you love and appreciate about your subject. And start to feel your heart opening, that expansion feeling in your chest. And allowing that light or energy to shine out from you. And then allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head, and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy. And allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. Very, very good. Good job. Now allow that light or energy to fill yourself as a child, that little you, any age, and love that child just for existing. No matter what. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to overflow from that little you and fill your whole childhood, shining that bright light into any darkness, filling everything, everyone, every experience, every event, every circumstance, and feeling your power as you do that. Very good. Now allow that light or energy to fill everyone who's on the call today. All those who are on camera, all those who are off camera today, fill each one with this light, this energy, loving each one just for existing, no matter what. No judgment, no expectations. Very, very good. Good job. You can open your eyes if you haven't closed. And let's check in with each person, find out how you're doing. So Lisa, you're first up on my screen. How are you today? Oh, good. I, I'm going to read from uh, Superpower. Very good. And, um, okay, it has to do with uh, when you can't feel the, the power. So um, sometimes you, you also sometimes forget to use it, especially in the beginning, because it's a new thing. You often forget to use it. So then you'll experience something reacting the way you're used to reacting. And then afterwards, realize that you could have used your power on it. In those instances, you may have felt frustrated with yourself for forgetting, and that's okay. Right then, as you remember it, tune in and fill yourself with power. Love yourself for forgetting. And if you can't love yourself for forgetting at that time, love the fact that <laughs> you can't love yourself for forgetting. <laughs> so just keep, just keep loving yourself <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> exactly. That's perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And it's a great reminder. And it is a case of loving whatever comes up, you know, so whatever, um, w whatever comes up, you love that, you allow that, you love that, it's perfect. So there's always an answer, no matter what. So there's never a point where, ah, oh, well, I can't do it because you just love the fact that you can't do it. <laughs> so it just keeps going. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Lisa. Very much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. All right. And next up on my screen is Chris. Hi, Chris. 
Hello again, everyone. Sorry I haven't been here. I have been here, but I haven't been on the screen with you. Oh, um, I've got to go off for a flu jab in a little while, so great that you've called me up quickly. It's so interesting because I thought I've got loads of books of the, of the material that you've been um, presenting to us for the last six or seven months. I thought I'm going to start rereading some of it now, <laughs> finally. Yes. And I thought, well, um, Lisa does all the um, superpower books, uh, so I'll just come up with some phrases that you come up with, you and Steve. And the one I just looked at now, um, this is going back to, oh, June, 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 12th of June. So you said, um, if something comes up, you can't identify a feeling or a knowing, and you said, well, just send it love. Whatever that is, and wherever it comes from, just love love it all. Love everything in every way. Um, and that just fits in with what Lisa has just said as well. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a theme there. <laughs> That's perfect. Thank you, oh, well. And it's true. Oh, and, yeah. Sorry, it's on. true that, you know, hearing similar things in different ways from different people um, with, you know, slightly different wording here and there, it's so powerful because we all get things um, at different times in different ways over time. And so we can hear the same thing. We can even hear the same thing from the same person in the same words and get it differently, you know, today than we got it last week. So it's it there is no um you know uh, there's no such thing as too much of uh of the information that that's empowering so thank you very much chris that's perfect thank you and just in this moment when we were doing the exercise uh, and my thoughts just came it when i'm doing this exercise and i've been working on my own because i haven't been well i've been part of the group but not participating I realize it really helps to hold my focus. And that's just, when it, if the mind is feeling a bit scatty or a little bit um, mixed or confused, it's just, just to say, oh, I'll, I'll send unconditional love. Many loo rolls get unconditional love in my life. <laughs> anyway, I do that. <laughs> but it really brings such focus into that moment and it lets, takes me forward again. So it's such a powerful, and, uh -huh. you know, Yay. Yes, it is. And it's very easy to underestimate it. It's very easy and natural to underestimate the power of practicing, even just on inanimate objects, um, because it, it's, it's the foundation. It's so much stronger than, than anything else. Um, I mean, it, it affects so much. How we're feeling in the moment is affecting so much more than we realize. So thank you, Chris, for that. Fantastic. Okay. And Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Odile. Um, what was I going to say? Yes, I was running something past um, Steve there. So, um, the gist of it is um, people were looking at me in the pub, seeing that I was being ignored, and this made me uncomfortable and uneasy. Uh, I needed attention in that moment to feel safe and secure and then I would feel special. So I just got that last sentence as you were, as I was not paying attention and following along with your deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were doing this is unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, so that's good. Well done. <laughs> well done. And um, so clearly, that's that is exactly what children need. That's exactly how a child is. You know, people go, "Oh, she's just looking for attention." Well, yeah, that's like when a child is hungry, saying, "Ah, oh, they just need food." <laughs> yep, that's that's how we live. And for a child, attention means. I'm, you know, positive attention means I'm safe and I'm, uh, well, it means I'm loved, I'm wanted, which means I'm safe. It all comes down to physical survival. 
And so, you know, attention is the equivalent of food and air and water to a child, to a child's subconscious. So um, when, as adults, we don't need that anymore in order to feel safe because we can create our own attention and safety inside us. But what was happening with you there was your subconscious was referring to previous references from childhood. So the, if that, ha so we're going to, we're going to address it now, but in addition to that, and for anybody else who's watching as well, in future, when that happens, you find yourself in that situation, the answer right then in the moment to empower yourself. So without needing anybody else outside of you is to think of the little you and give her a hug and play some new memories of your parents paying attention to you and fully focused on you and, and loving you and giving you affection and reassurance and playing with you. So whatever creates that feeling of connection and, and acceptance and love and affection. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you think I wouldn't have been bothered? Correct. Are you and serious? Yes. So let me explain it a, a little bit more physiologically. The reason you were bothered is because you had stress chemicals in your system. So that feeling of being aware of other people seeing you being ignored, the feeling of being ignored in the first place, all of that, those feelings were the effects of stress chemicals in your system. Now, as you change your focus, you change what chemicals are being produced. But as you were focusing on the fact that you were being ignored and all the proof in front of you that you were being ignored and worrying about or thinking about what other people were seeing, they, they're they now seeing that I'm being ignored and everything that means. As you were in those moments, in real time, your brain was pumping stress chemicals, more and more stress chemicals into your system, which became, which gave you those feelings, which made your conscious mind see even more proof. And, and so it becomes a vicious cycle. Now, when you break that cycle and you do something different, you shift your focus. So it could be, and you could shift it to just your color if you need to or whatever, but the, uh, the most effective thing in the moment because of the, the proof and evidence your subconscious is referring to in your childhood, you want to make sure that that child in you is getting what she needs. Because the truth is, even if that person or whoever was ignoring you, if they weren't ignoring you, so they were paying attention to you, or people weren't noticing or any of that, your brain will find another way to feel that feeling. It's going to always be something because it's not about now. It's about childhood. And so your subconscious just keeps replaying, recreating that feeling from childhood. And that's why, you know, you hear people say, and I have experience with this, uh, with, with uh, certain people as well, where, you know, somebody will be insecure and you reassure them and you say, I love you. And there's no, you know, there's, there's no one, there's, everything is wonderful. And you do, you do, and you do, and you do, but they will keep finding ways to feel that feeling because it's nothing to do with now. So that gives you a practical thing to do in the moment. So when, when you feel that feeling, immediately redirect your mind to the little you reassure her because it's little Katrina that's feeling that not you not the adult I mean the adult is feeling it but it's coming from the little you reassure her give her love tell her she's loved and play new memories of you walk little Katrina walks in the parents faces light up they drop everything oh it's so lovely to see you they hug you they give you that attention and affection and support does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. All right. So now then we can see what's what's still there. So so that feeling of being ignored, where in your childhood, what's the first thing that comes to mind as you think of that same feeling? Uh, you're being ignored and other people are noticing it or they can see it. There's nothing jumping out of you. Okay. So when you think of your childhood now, is it 
does it feel like you were loved and there was a lot of affection and attention and kindness and compassion and fun and support? Yes, if I stay focused on the new memories. Good. Yeah. Good job, Katrina. That's excellent. And that is the key to stay focused on the new memories until they are automatic. So thank you for, for sharing this because it's for other people as well. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to practice the new memories. And I also, I didn't pay much attention to that when I first started doing this kind of work. I would change a memory and then move on. And I never visited it again. But as I learned more about exactly how this works in the brain physiologically, physically, I realized that practicing the new memories is crucial to success. Because it's the same as, you know, if you, you learn a new phone number, if you don't practice that new phone number until it's automatic, until you remember it easily, you're not going to remember it, <laughs> right? Like, like anything. If you don't practice uh, a new skill that you learned, you won't remember it or you won't be able to do it. So practicing the new memories is the top, is a top priority. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that, because we say wherever you're putting your focus is what your, it determines what chemicals are being produced and therefore how you're feeling and everything else. Focusing on new memories that's what creates, you know, that, that, so you can combine it with where am I putting my focus, pick a new memory, and that in addition to establishing that new memory, it's, pre, it's creating feel-good chemicals in your system, which will bring down those stress chemicals. Now, this is, this is where it gets difficult, is if you've already been spending some time focusing on the fact that you're being ignored and that other people are noticing it because in real time you're pumping more and more stress chemicals into your system and then it gets really difficult to pull yourself out of it or to even just switch your focus that gets really hard and then you may just want to think of your favorite color so excuse yourself go to the loo take a deep breath and think of your color imagine being surrounded by your color then think of the little you and love that little you and then play some new memories and you won't feel like it and it won't make sense in the moment because your brain is so prefrontal cortex offline and you're in survival mode. And so all you can think of is the bear. So that's when you have to override that with number one, the color, and then the little you. Does that make sense, Katrina? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. But what I seem to be focused on now is... Um, not the thing of being ignored um, is I needed attention to feel oh. safe and secure. So when I wasn't getting attention, yes, um, but as an, an adult, I mean, I, I don't need attention to feel safe and secure. Well, Well, that's not true either, because there is, in social occasions, yeah, I would need attention just to reassure, yeah. Yes, and that is, again, that's coming from the childhood. Well, number one, there is a certain amount that is completely instinctual and human. We need, interconnect we need connections with other people anyway. So that is uh, part of being human anyway. But when it is, when it becomes... Um, disempowering it's coming from the child it's not coming from you as an adult and even even the instant the natural instinct so I've been in situations where I walk into a room and there's that kind of thing where everybody nobody's you know nobody's uh, acknowledging me or I feel embarrassed or self-conscious and I've been able to override that by just being inside myself and and doing the superpower and so with that feeling of, it doesn't matter. I don't need them. I don't need anybody else because I'm safe. I'm alive. I'm not in danger right now. And I have the power to create this feeling inside myself as if everyone 
is paying attention to me and it's all, you know, we're connecting and it's fun and all of that because all of that happens inside us. Whether someone, so, you know, when you pretend as a child, you play pretend, it's all inside, but you can still feel the feelings of, oh, the sharks and no, oh, the, you know, that that's the part of the play, uh, the role playing that creates the same chemicals as long as you allow it, allow yourself to go into it. So you can, so here's the thing, you know, um, who do you, who do you admire? And it could be a character like Superwoman, or it could be a real person like Oprah, or who, or, or it doesn't have to be a woman, can be a man. What kind of person would you like to be more like, if you could choose? Who has confidence, doesn't seem to need anybody You'll have to leave that one with me, Odin. There's nobody popping in there. I don't have um, gods or goddess, as in I don't sort of look to. Well, it doesn't need to be that. It's just someone you look at and you go, well, that person seems confident. There's lots of them in the world, right? Yes, but it's it's crazy. Every When I go to think of someone, I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's okay, but yeah. But then there's a, an add a but. I put a but to it. Oh, to them. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Okay. So it doesn't matter. So I want you to think of Superwoman right now. You know who Superwoman is? Okay. Yeah. We got that. Okay. I want you to imagine Superwoman sitting in that pub and she's, nobody's paying attention to her. What would that be like? What would she do or how would she feel? But she probably would have interacted with the other guys or the men in the bar or got her stool and moved it in between the two of them. You know, she, she would have done something about it. Okay, possibly. What do you think I would have done? Well, you would have sent them all love, but um, I don't know. Um, I don't so, know. Oh, do you like yeah. So what I'm getting to is people with different programs would do different things, would handle it differently. And rather than being at the mercy of the circumstances or the other people, you want to make sure that you decide how you, how you want to react. You're empowered. And so this is exactly what happened to me. So I was very insecure. I would never show it, <laughs> but I would, it would eat me up. It would absolutely eat me up when I felt somebody didn't care about or wasn't paying attention to me or was more interested in something or someone else, or I was being interrupted. I mean, there was just loads of programs there. I would never show, I would keep this kind of facade, I'm fine, but inside it would eat me up. So, and, and it wasn't hurting anyone else except me. Nobody, nobody knew, never mind cared. So what I did was as I learned this technique, as I learned the superpower and changed my childhood memories, because of course, same as everybody else, it went back to my childhood, being ignored as a child or not getting the attention I needed or being um, dismissed or made fun of because I need the attention, that kind of thing. So I changed all of that, but I also, number one, I prepaid every time I went somewhere. So every time I went into a social situation or a gig or anything, I prepaved so that I loved it all anyway, loved everybody anyway. I imagined the worst case scenario and loved that. So I literally imagined me sitting all by myself and nobody cares. And I loved that. I loved that me. I loved that, like that energy to overflow from that me and fill the whole place and everybody in it, no matter what they did. And then when I walked in, I walked in feeling good no matter what. And if the person I was with was focused on someone else and it looked like they were more interested in that person than me, I maintained that state of I love me and it doesn't matter what they do. I love me and I'm strong and I, and I am going to enjoy myself not in a way of getting back at the person. So that's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line there and that's very important. So it's not like, like you mentioned, oh, well, she would talk to the other men and that. 
if that's fun and it's because it's fun and they're interesting and that that's great there's nothing wrong with that but not out of like oh i'm going to make the person jealous because that's disempowering for you so it's about well, what would i what do i feel like doing what would be fun let's pretend this person isn't here what would i do how would i enjoy myself well, and sometimes for me it's been just listening to the music and enjoying the music and you know just having what I'm having, a drink or whatever, and just feeling, feeling love inside myself. What do I want, not what do I need from someone else? What do I want to do right now? All things being equal, and this person wasn't here, or this situation was difficult, different. So, and that, the brilliant thing is that is when you'll find other people change around you. But you've got to be okay even if they don't. You've got to know that even if everybody leaves, I'm fine because I have everything inside myself. I'm like a little snail with my own house. I don't need anyone else or anything else. Anyone or anything else is a bonus. So that's for the conscious mind. That's what you want to keep reminding yourself. You want to practice it when you're not in the situation. Practice it now at home, when you go to sleep, when you wake up in the morning. Practice that feeling of, I have everything I need inside me to feel how I, how I want to feel. And I don't need anyone else. If other people want to play, that's great. If they don't, that's also okay. So, and so what that will do, it'll change you energetically and it'll change the way you respond to people, the way you speak to people, the way you... Um, uh, connect with people, the way you communicate, it'll change everything. Okay. How does that sound? Perfect. Wonderful. Good. And that is in addition to changing and practicing the childhood memory, changing the old childhood memories, creating brand new ones. So whenever you, you know, throughout the day, even just one scene, like imagining walking into a room, your parents are busy, they're talking to people or they're busy doing something and they drop everything. They turn around, oh, hey, sweetheart, there you are. And everything is focused on you. Just that one scene, you could try this as an experiment. And for everybody, try this as an experiment. Create that one scene in your mind. You can see how quick it was. Just the way, just what I spoke, spoke it through right there. That's as quick as it needs, you know, that's as long as it needs to be. And then keep repeating that over and over in your head throughout your day while you go to the loo, <laughs> when you go for a walk, when you're doing chores, when you go to sleep, when you wake up, put little notes to remind yourself if you like to begin with, because you may forget. Keep playing just that one scene over and over and see what happens. All right. Okay. Do you yes. think you can do that? Oh, Dale, I want to, I want to jump in with a couple of additional things that after you do that work, Katrina, then go back and also revise and change that memory in the pub. Yes. yes. And that may, you, you may want to do, you know, it may take a stepping stone um, of uh, you interacting differently in that situation. So uh, it can be you, you know, interacting like Superwoman would have interacted on the bar stool. You know, it's you deciding you're going to get up and, and move down to the other end of the bar and start, you know, you know, interacting with everybody in the bar, whatever you can, it, it can be that type of, uh, that type of stepping stone, but then eventually changing it to where you, you receive the attention that you needed in that, in that scene. Okay. So there's no need to hang on to that old memory. Mm -hmm. You don't get any extra credit points for that. Yeah, it has been around for a long time, so this is perfect. Yeah, um, I can say that I do it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And one other little tip that I use in situations, or I have used in, in the past, in situations where I'm pre-paving, and I'm going into a situation where traditionally I may have felt some of that feeling of insecurity, I'm imagining the people that I'm going to meet as five-year-olds. Yes, that's the other one. 
So I, uh, you know, if I was feeling some social um, awkwardness about being in a, in a group of people I didn't know, I'm imagining that they're all five-year-olds wearing adult clothing. It's too big and they're, you know, everybody's just standing there pretending that, you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever is going on in that scene. So I'm pre-paving, I'm sending love, and I'm imagining that we're all just a group of five-year-olds trying to, to be in this situation together. So that's another little tip. And then I just wanted to add uh, that Ilya put into the chat, I worked on this topic myself recently, and I changed it to where I now feel, quote, if you see me by myself, don't be mistaken, I am my own team. Nice. I like so. that. That's kind very of very good. Very, very good. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. And so, Katrina, does that help? Yes, brilliant, Ute. Thanks a million. You're very welcome. And thank you for sharing because I know it, it'll help others as well. Thank you, sweetheart. All right. And then um, I'm going to, Swasti has come in. I'm going to come to you in a minute, but I, um, I'm I just want to read this email I just received just before we started, before I forget. Um, so I received this email from someone um, who said uh, that I could read it to the group. She says, P.S. you can read this to the group if you want to. Uh, so this is someone who hasn't come to the group live, but she watches the recordings. She says, uh, good morning, Odile. Uh, thank you for the tip about the coffee. Oh, she, she'd had the happy coffee. So, and she says, an even bigger thank you for uh, continuing to share the many encouraging and helpful videos on YouTube. Uh, I lost my mom since the last time we corresponded. Uh, corresponded. It was a very difficult time. Uh, prayer and support from loved ones helped in many ways, but so did learning and practicing the Remit method. I appreciate you and Steve so much. I also appreciate the kind and very brave women that learn and practice the Remit method. So she's talking about all of you each week. They are incredibly generous. I send love to all of you. Great big hug. So it's just nice to know, especially for all of you who share your, um, your questions and your experiences, that it's having an impact on people who aren't even here live but are watching the recording. All right, so thank you all uh, as well on behalf of, of her. All right, and now Swasti. Hi, Swasti. Hello, I'm sorry I'm late. I was running around trying That's to find my right. shield. <laughs> For the, for the exam. Um, uh, oh yeah, so today I had like what feels like um, an interaction with people, like people in person, uh, in like six months. <laughs> so I went to my school because my teacher has to like sort out my application and stuff. But this was my first time using the superpower like in a real life situation. So for some reason I was very, very, very anxious just like throughout. I don't know why, but yeah, I used it and it was great. So I did the allowing and then the super parting. <laughs> Fantastic. Yay. Well done, you. <laughs> thank you. Good job. And thank you for, for sharing that. Oh, um, I had a question. Mm -hmm. Well, one, I don't know what it is, but it's like this thing about one, like one thing going wrong or one thing that messed up a lot of things <laughs> has been coming up again and again and i think it might be to do with like being an only child or not being an only child and like, not getting the attention so like i don't know how to go about solving that because should i just look to see if i was an only child or like what's left from there basically right okay so um possibly so i have um a possible idea there but let me ask you a little bit more first. So this feeling of um, one thing spoiling everything, just tell me a little bit more about that or give me a little bit of a, uh, an example of, of that. Yeah, so I realised that every single year, like one thing goes wrong that makes my like, self-esteem come very, very low. So it's always like, well, it's always to do with school. Like one exam goes wrong. Like I got a C in an exam and I've never got off like below an A. Um, and that made me feel really sad. And then, uh, like last year in the IQ exam that I'm taking again, was one like one section that brought the whole average down. Right. Yeah, just that. 
And so just to clarify, so is it always just one thing or is it some t is it that one thing and then another and another? Or is it just like it always seems to be just the one? Yeah, so if I had like a group of things I'm doing, mm -hmm. it's always one of them that goes wrong. Right, okay. And so it said, I, I know there's an English uh, phrase, there's always one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would be that always one. <laughs> All yeah. right, very good. So good job, Swasti. So let's look at this. So the, the thing that came to mind first, because of what I know about your childhood a little bit, is uh, there's a, how, what's the gap between you and your sister? Um, like nearly eight years. Okay, and between your sister and your brother? Seven, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's a huge gap between. So you were eight years old when your sister was born? Yeah, just about to turn eight. Okay, good. And what was your life like before that? Compared to afterwards, I mean. It's actually interesting. This is what I was thinking about too. Like, uh, the reason why the gap between us is so big is because my parents were moving at different stages of their life. So like moving to England and then moving to a new job and then moving to a new house. Um, so I think, yeah, I was quite lonely. Yes. And so what was your um, school like, uh, school work or school experience like up until eight years old? And I know part of that was in India. Yeah, I don't remember much, but it was moving a lot, like moving schools. Okay. And a w one school I remember that I stayed the longest and it wasn't great. Like I would always get really low scores. Especially in Hindi, which was like the language there. It was it was used to be horrendous, like nearly failing the the paper. All right. And then this thing of there's always one thing that seems to derail everything else. When did you first notice that? When what's your earliest memory of that? Well, what comes to mind is the, like the exam I was talking about, like a Hindi Hindi exam. Indeed. I think I got like 54% or something and you need 50% to pass. Right. That comes up now. Okay, and how old were you then? Probably six. Like we said exams quite young there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. So at six years old, you got 54%. So you passed. Mm -hmm. So what was wrong with getting 54%? Because it's like, oh, wow. It's the same as the exam that I'm about to take now. Like they take the average of everything. Mm -hmm. So it will bring the whole average down. Brings the average down. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And what's wrong with that? It's like one bad apple spoils everything else. Good, good job, Swasti. And how do you know that? How do you know about one bad apple spoils everything else, spoils all the others? Where did you learn that? I think it might be like a cousin again. He was really, yeah, he was not like well behaved amongst yeah. everybody else. There you go. Very good. Okay. So this, um, because this, for, for you to be noticing one thing goes, you know, there's always one thing that goes wrong that, that pulls everything else down or that spoils everything else. For you to be noticing and comprehending that, there has to be a reference for it because not everybody notices that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do, but you know, it depends on the programs there. So, because the truth is that it, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, but your brain is filtering out all the times it doesn't happen. Yeah. Fitting in with this, with the, and it's looking for the times it does happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To provide that proof. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we want to change it. So the um, so your cousin. Um, so he, what's your earliest memory of your cousin doing something that uh, that spoils everything else? The first thing that comes to mind. Mm, I think I worked on this, but it might be an extra piece. It's like when he came to live with uh, like my auntie and my grandparents and me. Yeah. So it's just standing there, going like, "Why is he here?" <laughs> Right. Yes. And so what was life like before he turned up to live there? It was like the spoiled child one, like as one well, with my auntie, not with my parents. My parents yeah, I don't think my parents I don't remember them being there. Like he came after my parents left. Mm -hmm. So I was always my auntie would used to like take care of me. 
Right. And so, so your life before he turned up there was good? Yeah, apart from the parents leaving, I think, yeah. Yes. So your, your grandparents and your auntie treated you well? They loved you? Mm -hmm. As you say that, probably not. <laughs> I know my aunties, but I don't know why, but my seems like my grandparents didn't. Okay, so because what I'm looking for is, and whether they did or didn't, it's it, it's the perception that you had. So what I'm looking for is that moment when your brain put together, it was when he turned up, that <laughs> everything went, everything was fine, and then one person just ruins everything, or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it might just be that he turns up. And then there, was, there used to be a lot of punishment. Like he would always get beaten quite severely <laughs> because he, he, was, he was really bad. Um, like really smart, but just really naughty as well. And then I'd get threatened as well because if I did something like that. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. So again, for everybody, for everyone watching and anyone who uh, doesn't, um, you know, who, who isn't aware of this yet, witnessing someone else being suffering in any way being punished even if they deserved it especially when it's um when it's physical like that that will impact that child that you were that will absolutely impact you and create whatever references depending on what else you've got going on there so seeing him or knowing about him or hearing about him whatever being beaten especially severely that's going to make that's going to be a foundation piece of who you are does that make sense yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. okay so um so then what we want to do of course is change all of that so mm -hmm. i would do a stepping stone mm -hmm. where you um he is naughty he comes to live there he is naughty but it doesn't matter so he does whatever he does and the, the adults are kind and compassionate and they give him guidance and then he listens. So they speak to him kindly and compassionately because of course he was acting out because of whatever his, you know, why did he come and live there? What was the reasoning? What was um, the, the circumstances rather? Yeah, there was a lot of like politics going on. Like um, something, I still don't know what the story is. It still goes on to this day, but uh, his grandpa got shot or something. Okay. And they were figuring out, and they blamed it on his son. Wow. But they had no proof, so that was going on. So that, you can imagine a little boy mm -hmm. going that, whatever, however he experienced that, that's going to have a huge impact on him, which is why he was then doing whatever he was doing. Mm, okay. Right? So, two pieces. So he, he arrives, he does the naughty things, but the but the adults react differently. So they treat him with kindness, compassion. They explain and they say, you know, you've gone through some hectic stuff, uh, but this is, you know, this is, and, and they give him the details of what to do instead. So, you know, a lot of what happens a lot in parenting is don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other thing, but there's no what to do instead. Absolutely. So instead of doing that next time, I want you to do this. So, and you don't need the details of what that is, just know in your head or hear them saying, okay, so next time, very kindly, very compassionately. That's the stepping stone, practice that. And then the final memory is that, uh, no, sorry, another stepping stone. He comes to stay, but he's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with him. He is in, he's, he's kind, he's compassionate, he's well-behaved. And you two have a great time. You get on really well. Everybody, there's family occasions and it's fun and everybody's playing games and doing activities together. Make that really strong. Second stepping stone. Final memory, he just comes to visit. And I know we have created that before, but just yeah. re-establish that. So he, he comes to visit and he's lovely. And you get, again, you get on well. So same kind of thing where you're all doing games and you're all doing activities and that. But rewrite his child, his whatever happened there with his grandfather and and the son and all of that. Rewrite that so that that never happened. There was never any political issues. It was a party, and and I don't mean a political party. I mean a, <laughs> a celebratory party or 
it's uh, you know his his parents are doing something fun they're building some fun fun fair or you know something like that so something that is exciting fun safe mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah okay. how does all of that sound yeah that sounds good i need some work i think <laughs> yes a lot of work <laughs> so you can well and it doesn't need to take long it doesn't it take long, yeah. a lot of effort mm -hmm. you know you can you could in fact watch this recording again this piece of this recording again and just follow along just do it in your mind as i'm talking yeah yeah sometimes sometimes that, yeah it works really well mm -hmm. okay. and you can you know if you want to remind yourself you can do that you can pause and just make keywords just write down keywords that will remind you stepping stone so stepping stone one um adults are compassionate mm -hmm. stepping stone two he's fabulous <laughs> right final yeah. memory he doesn't live there but his parent and and we write the you know the history where his his grandparents his grandfather instead of being shot he was actually given a medal of some sort he was you know they've created this wonderful um facility for the community or he climbed mount everest or you know you could just whatever would be fun and so in the event that happened instead of a political thing and it's shooting was a celebration and an acknowledgement or a you know something like that mm. okay does that sound good yeah thank you yeah you're very welcome swasti well done and thank you again for sharing sweetie thank you i couldn't find that reference <laughs> yeah. and that's okay it's it can be very difficult to find them at times and so then once you've done all of that then think about the thing of um you know it's always one thing goes wrong mm -hmm. one thing that affects you know, so go back to that and notice what's there now you know once you've changed those i mean no, then notice what's there is does that still feel true and if so how do i know it's true how does it feel and keep doing that process and you can use the allowing technique if, you know as well and keep doing that process until when you think of it, you think, yeah, no, that's not true. I know that sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes something go appears to go wrong, but it doesn't matter. Or, you know, it, so that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, you're very welcome. Yay for you, good thank job. Thank you. All right, and Steve, any questions from the chat? Nope, we're good for now. Very good. So let's go into the superpower targeting now. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower state, however you normally do that. Start to feel your heart opening, that expansion feeling in your chest. Very good. And allow that light or energy to fill your whole body, spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. Very good. Now allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing, no matter what. Good job. And now let that light, that energy fill your subject. And then imagine your subject doesn't want to be with you or doesn't have the qualities that you love and appreciate and keep them filled with this light, this energy anyway. Very good. Now let's go to Lisa. Fill Lisa with this light, this energy, this love. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Lisa just for existing. Thank you. 
Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Lisa and fill the financial situations of everyone. No matter what those are, no matter what happens, no matter what is happening right now and no matter what may happen, fill it all with this light, this energy, this love, exactly as it is, without judgment or expectation, shining this light into any darkness and loving it all anyway. Very, very good. And now to Chris. Fill Chris with this same light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and up to her fingertips, love Chris just for existing. Good job. And now to Katrina. Fill Katrina with the same light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Katrina just for existing. Very good. Good job. And now to Swasti. Fill Swasti with this same light, this energy. From the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips, love Swasti just for existing. And Swasti has asked if we can target everyone in this group as a form of thank you and gratitude. So on behalf of Swasti, fill everyone in the group with this same light, this energy. From the tips of their toes to the top of their head and out to their fingertips, loving each one just for existing. And with that thank you, that gratitude just for existing. Very, very good. Good job. And now to Sylvie. Fill Sylvie with this light this energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips love Sylvie just for existing and allow that light that energy to overflow from Sylvie and fill her mum who passed away yesterday evening and her family with the same light this energy is love. Loving everything, everyone, no matter what, exactly as they are. Shining this light into any darkness. Very, very good. Good job. And now to all those who are off camera today, and all those who are watching the recording. Fill each one with this light, this energy, from the tips of their toes to the top of their head and out to their fingertips, loving each one just for existing. Noticing the strength of that power as you do that. Very, very good. And now thinking of yourself later today, fill that version of you with the same light, this energy. Loving you no matter what. No matter what you'll be experiencing or feeling or doing, loving that version of you exactly as you are. and surge and surge again very very good all right you can open your eyes and Sylvie sorry to hear about your mom sweetheart 
but well done for continuing to turn up here and continuing to use the, um, the techniques. And of course, make sure that, uh, you know, from experience that you're continually bringing your focus back to focus on the love and the affection and the appreciation and the admiration and all of that replacing it, replacing any negativity with that and feeling that love. And, you know, once, depending on a person's beliefs, but what we believe is once that person has graduated and logged out of the game, so to speak, then all of the programs, all of the suffering, all of the issues that they have, of course, are no longer a part of, of them. And so they're able to be their authentic self. And I felt this very much with my mum, that I felt closer to her and it, and it felt like I was closer to her authentic self, her real self. So I hope that helps you and anybody else who's lost someone. All right. And so that's it for today. And we will see you back here same time, same place tomorrow. Thank you to all of those who share every time we come on here. So lots of love to all of you. Take care now. Keep practicing. Bye.